Buddy? Yeah, so uh, this is a panel today to talk about something that we've all experienced at some point or another, or that we will experience. Um, and that is breaking into games user research and how to go about that. So today, the three of us are here to kind of talk about some of our experiences, talk about some of our uh, ideas and thoughts on how to go about doing that. So uh, it's really open forum. We really want to interact with you guys, ask questions, um, and we'll try to answer the best we can. So. Uh, we have 20 minutes, I believe, to talk, and about five minutes for questions. So if you have a question, feel free to jump in, and we'll, um, we can make time for it. So. so a little bit about me. My name is Russ. Uh, I work at Sony. I've been there for three and a half years now, um, and started as an intern, and made my way as a contractor, and then came on full time. So. Uh, during my time there, I've worked on some AAA games like Bloodborne, Horizon, uh, Ratchet and Clank as well. So, and then also we've done some stuff on the system software with features, and I've gotten the opportunity to do some accessibility work as well. So that's been really exciting. So, I hand it over to these guys and. Hi, I'm Meg, and a little bit louder, I think. Um, so I am a current um, master's student at the University of Michigan, um, interning with Glue Mobile. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mom. No. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I just discovered UX like two years ago. Um, came here last year and realized that this is where I needed to be. So I immediately just started working on indie games and getting my feet wet however I could. Um, yeah. Oh, before this, I was doing teaching. I was a Mandarin Chinese teacher. So yeah. You can change fields. Don't don't be too terrified. Hi, I'm Hannah Murphy. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Minnesota um, in mass communication, so not HCI at all. Uh, I learned about Games UX when I was a master's student, and I just kind of started doing it. Um, there are a lot of local independent developers around me in the Minneapolis area, so I just kind of reached out to them and started getting my feet wet while I was in my master's, and I still continue to do that now. I'm also working full-time at U.S. Bank as a UX researcher. Great. All right, so I got a few questions prepared. And the first one is, how did you guys get interested in games user research? So we're going to alternate, so we'll start with Hannah. So I kind of always knew I wanted to do research to some in some capacity. I thought maybe initially I wanted to do academic, but like I said, when I was in my master's, I found out about user experience research and then game user experience research. Um, so I think I reached out to someone who wrote an article uh, about, regarding the differences between QA and UX research, and I asked her about it more and what I could do to get involved, and she referred me to go uh, to the GER Summit last year, which was my first time um, in the mentorship program. So, yeah. Um, yeah, three years ago I was having a crisis of, um, I don't know if I'm doing what I want to do. Um, and then a friend let me know that, hey, UX is a thing and I think you'd be really good at it. So I ended up joining a master's program, found out that educational psychology is a lot like UX psychology. Um, and then a good friend, Jim Stanhope, uh, let me know that games are actually a thing I can do since I love them um, and I've been a gamer all my life. I was like, yeah, I could, I would totally want to do this. So I immediately jumped on board indie games um, just to really see how things work. Um, yeah. So my experience is, my experience is pretty similar. Um, I start off in industrial engineering and as I was exposed to the field of human factors, I realized that user experience was a thing. And that kind of really clicked with me and was something that I really wanted to pursue, especially when I realized that this could be applied to video games, which is a passion of mine. So uh, once I discovered that, um, I think I read an article in the mid 2000s that Microsoft had a team of, of user researchers that were doing this. And I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. So um, I pursued that by moving to California and doing grad school and then I think all of us have some experience with this summit in pursuing uh, different jobs. So that's one thing that I think a big takeaway from this is that that's a huge step is coming to this summit. So, yeah. Um, so I guess the next question would be like, how did you get 
your jobs that you've or the experience that you have accumulated so far? Um, I mentioned it a couple of times. I jumped on an indie studio and I said, hey, I'll work for free. Um, and then uh, I came to Gur last year and I met Sarah and we got talking and I really liked um, Glue's methodology. And I said, hey, I'll, I'll work for free. <laughs> so um, kind of a theme, but it's a lot of fun to be able to do. And I luckily have that ability to do it as a student. So if you are a student and there's any sort of internship program in your school, take advantage of that. Um, uh, yeah, and just connect with people. The mentor program also really helped me out. I met Jordan Lynn through that. Um, it's really simple. You just go online to the GER SIG, um, go to the mentorship program, find a person you like, send an email, and within like a couple days, you'll be hooked up. Yeah, so mine is pretty similar to Meg's. Uh, just doing it, doing it for free. Um, there wasn't, re there isn't really a huge interest at the U of M in UX research, at least that I know of. Um, so I just kind of had to find it where I could. Um, so like I said, it's more through indie devs for me and just being like, hey, you know what UX is? Let me do it on your game. So, and they're usually more than happy to let me like doing free work on their game. Um, so I'm still doing that now. It's been a year about now exactly um and then again the mentorship program i met kevin keeker and that's been super helpful um so yeah and sometimes there's not always local dev devs i know that so um i guess my advice for that would be to like reach out to indie devs that maybe aren't local um meeting them if you're going to gdc that's a good way to meet them or even here um and doing it remotely that's another option so I think uh, one thing that we talked about between ourselves was that the value of the mentor program a lot. Um, how many of you guys have tried that or pursued that in some way? Get out. Okay, it. so there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's something that's definitely an avenue to pursue. Um, from what I hear, the number of mentors is limited in compared to the number of mentees. So might want to get on that pretty quick. <laughs> but it seems to be a really good experience from both parties, from what I've heard. So. That's definitely a great way to do it. Um, from what I've talked uh, to David Tisseran, who has participated in it, he said that it's mostly um, teaching about the process, so asking people to solve on their own and then guiding them in, in that respect. So I think a lot of there's a lot of benefits to doing that. Um, another thing that we talked about was general UX experience um, that can be obtained in a lot of different ways. One thing that really comes to my mind is uh, meetups in UX, especially in the Bay Area for people who are around here. There's uh, one that really strikes me uh, as, as huge as Bay Kai. And this happens, I believe it's every second Tuesday in Palo Alto. And it's a great way to get out there. Um, it's free, just go and you listen to talks, they have cookies. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty good overall. So a lot of these things can transition over, especially um, you know if you don't always make it into the industry on your first time, these skills will transfer as well. So. I think that's a really good thing to pursue. And there's meetups, there's other things that related to UX um, around the country as well. So definitely try to pursue that. Uh, one thing that we talked about that was pretty big was the emotional state of transitioning from academia and school into actually industry. Um, I know you guys had a lot of input on that. So you wanna talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So. One of the biggest things that I sought from the mentorship program was just like that transition because I came from an academic background and I had no idea how to transition into the industry since um, my master's was preparing people to go into their PhD. Um, so Kevin was super helpful with that. Um, I know it's not easy. It's scary. Um, but just know that it's like, okay, we all go through that. Um, I went through it very recently in this, this last uh, summer and fall. So um, it's very relatable. Um, and I think it's important. So that's another reason to seek out a mentor in the mentorship program, I think. Yeah, one thing um, that I think it's a, you should make peace with is the imposter syndrome. Um, you will all have it. Um, you might have recovered if you are uh, have a little more years in the industry, but um, 
I see a nope, 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 nope. Um, you will most likely always have the imposter syndrome from when you are just beginning and just getting your feet wet into, into the industry to when you've been here for a few years from what I've been told. Um, and just make peace with that by knowing that everyone else has it too. Fake it till you make it. Keep doing the work. And so long as you're doing the work, you're not an imposter. So long as you're actually doing UX research um, in whatever um, facet that might be, you're not an imposter. All right, so uh, one thing that you guys have been involved in that it's pretty interesting, I think, is your, your game and your UX groups. Can you talk a little bit about how those have impacted uh, your career and how these, you know, the details that may apply to people interested? Um, the University of Michigan has a group called InfoGamers, and it started just two years ago. Um, there's, I brought along some people from InfoGamers this year, um, and it's very new. Um, so we saw a need that, um, though we were in a human-computer interaction field, um, we didn't really have many connections to the game industry. So we decided to just start a group for that on our own. Didn't have a lot of support because our, our um, program really isn't for... Um, focused on games. Um, and so we just started emailing people. We started finding indie devs nearby. We started um, finding meetups we could do. We started networking with um, alumni. And that was really just from the ground up. And now we're able to bring six people to GER with us. Um, and it kind of gets bigger every year. Mine is a little different. Um, the I guess a uh, nonprofit I'm associated with is Glitch Gaming, which started out as a student group back in 2010 and is now a nonprofit that supports gaming and different aspects of gaming. Uh, UX is just one of those. So through Glitch, I have met a lot of the independent developers in the Minneapolis area. Um, and that's actually the program I'm going through. They're called Power Leveling. And I was able to come here this year um, and go to GDC through that as well. So they're really about helping their community and getting everyone connected. So they're primarily who I've gone through to find my connections for indie developers and doing UX and meeting other people who are interested in UX that way. All right. So um, like I was saying, I think a huge step for sure uh, that all three of us can agree on is that coming to this conference is a big deal. So the next step to that is to be bold. I think this is all something that we agreed on, that the opportunities are out there, uh, you just have to act on them. So that can be a little frightening or intimidating to a lot of people, but um, this is the time to do it. I mean, this is conference is designed for this industry, so this is the way, this is the way to network, as well as GDC. I mean, this week, is, there's all kinds of stuff going on, so. Um, yeah, there's also a job listing I can tell one thing that I've noticed is that the size of the conference over the past years, uh, I think is pretty indicative of the field. There's so many more people at the, you know, the past few years than it was four years ago. It's, it's crazy. So I think that's a pretty good sign that there are opportunities out there. You just have to pursue them, uh, do it in the right way. There's also a uh, job board, I believe, on the website, if that's correct, that I think that you can pursue and see what's out there. So there's definitely resources out there. Um, just have to pursue them. So, and Ubisoft has a booth outside. Yes, they do. I just talked to them. <laughs> so, I think that's uh, pretty much it for what I've got for questions. Uh, do we have anybody any burning questions? That yeah. Um, for you two that uh, said I work for free, how did you support yourself while doing that? Okay, uh, let me just repeat the questions to make sure people can hear it. The question was, uh, when you work for free, uh, how do you support yourself while doing that? Right. Okay. Um, luckily, I am privileged enough right now to be a student, um, but I know that if I don't somehow get a job right away, it'll be my night job. I'll have a day job. Um, and it's just one of those sacrifices you kind of have to make. Um, it's an unfortunate truth. Um, but luckily, I really love it. <laughs> um, so even though it'd be something I do when I get home or something I do after I get done with my 40 hour school week, I at least feel like I'm not working all the time because it's something that I love. Um, yeah, it's an unfortunate truth that you might have to have a day job at the same time. 
Yeah, so what she said. <laughs> um, I was a student when I started, so that was my, I guess, main source of income. And now I am a UX researcher at US Bank, so I do that as my day job. Um, and then do games user research when I can. That's a great question. Um, I think personally, oh, sorry. Uh, the question was regarding imposter syndrome, what are some ways to mediate that uh, for, I guess, senior members on the team? So what can be done to overcome the confidence problem when you're new on the team? Um, I think personally, being open to ideas, being able to listen from senior members on the team, um, being able to explain things in the right way and showing the process. Uh, as far as articles, I'm not, I'm not sure. Do you guys have anything maybe to? I don't have articles, but I have methods. <laughs> methods? Um, one of the things that I can help, I uh, think can help new people is encouraging them to um, kind of do a mini presentation to you about how your UX method, their own UX methodology is. Um, and then giving them feedback on that. Um, so as a former teacher, there's something called the compliment sandwich. And if you're not uh, familiar with it, it's, that's great. I'm glad you did X, Y, Z. I think you can work on X. Um, thank you for being proud enough to, or being bold enough to present this to me. And as a mentor, you might need to like encourage your mentee to do that. It's really nerve wracking. Um, but tell them that it's better for them to present to a mentor than to um than in an interview um and then by the time they actually get to interviews they'll be a lot less nervous and a lot more confident in themselves because i think they do need some getting that critical feedback and ha showing um showing them that they've grown from that feedback really helps them see that i've learned and i'm not the newbie that i was Yeah, so definitely that. And something else I'd like to add is just like emotional support. That's probably one of the biggest things. Um, and just being like reassured, like, this is okay. Like, we felt this way too. Um, I think that's probably helped me more than I think any academic or like article could probably. Um, and encouraging them to fail. That sounds um, kind of counterintuitive. But um, just like take risks, like it's okay. Like maybe you might get like your feelings hurt or something, but um, that's part of the process I think um, is just trying things and seeing what happens and just being there for when things happen for like emotional support. Those are probably my two biggest things. I think that's uh, that was a really good point about encouraging to fail. I think that um, something that we encounter in design is that if you fail fast, you get it out of the way fast, you can improve on it, iterate. I think it could also apply to uh, actually being employed into it, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so when you're applying for a gaming company, it's often you get the question like, why do you want to work for this company? Did you answer, I'm not, I never am sure how to answer it. Did it focus more on like why you enjoy you know, the games they produce or should it focus on specifically you know, how your skills are gonna you know, help the company? Okay, so the question was, when you're applying for a game user research position, should you focus on, uh, I might paraphrase a little bit, your passion for games or your skills, right? Uh, honestly, the answer is both from, from what I've seen. Um, I've asked my manager about it as well to try and get some research into that. Um, it's important that you're passionate for games, of course, and I think all of us meet that criteria. But um, it's not just playing them, it's actually breaking them down, understanding them, analyzing them and understanding how they can be improved upon as well. So I think uh, meshing that with showcasing your skills and understanding the methodology, uh, the, the principles behind them, I think that's the way to go about it. But of course, yeah, your passion for games is huge in this. Yeah, absolutely. You guys have anything to add on that? Okay. All right. Hi. 
been really nice to hear from you all. Um, I was curious if you all have any favorite anecdotes and like war stories <laughs> from uh, working with indie developers. I know that like I mean I work within a large company, so like you know I see the people I work with every day. So if you're working say with an indie developer who might also be you know have like a very interesting like niche idea, what are some what are some things, some methods that you use or some funny stories and Okay, so um, ways to handle horror stories, right? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be totally horrifying. I'm just like, you know, like, Okay. Uh, I actually only have good things to say about indie because um, they really love UXers because um, they don't, they're not super familiar. Um, what thing, what worked with uh, my group was super iter iterative design. We go do a play test say, hey, add a timer to this. And they'd be like, cool. Uh, and three days later, they'd be like, hey, uh, we added a timer. Do you want to do another play test? Um, so having that flexibility with them and that um, just love of what they were doing, I think was really awesome working with Indy. And there were no like PMs to have to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this necessarily counts as like a horror story, but I've had indie devs that just flat out say no to me uh, when I tell them things. Um, and I mean, it's a great learning experience though, so I don't know if it's necessarily a horror thing. I mean, all you can do, I feel like as a researcher, is um, communicate clearly what you're doing and I guess do your job well. And sometimes you will have people who say, I understand what you're saying, but no, I'm not doing that. Um, or just tell you like you're, um, research is wrong. I've had that. Um, but just le <laughs> just learning, I guess, how to um, adjust to those situations. And I guess my way of approaching those situations is empathizing with them and understanding why they feel that way, even if I don't agree with what they're saying. Um, and just accepting that sometimes you can't, I mean, you can't control it. It's not your thing. Um, yeah. I don't know, just trying to see it from their perspective and compromise. All right, maybe time for one more or oh, oh, we're done. Okay. All right. So yeah, we'll be around. So feel free to come and talk to us. Um, yeah, we'll be here all day. Thank you guys.